Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here on The Place for Answers. I want to share with you today my personal gluten poisoning story. I was on a cruise recently, and uh, you know, the cruise line did a really good job of kind of accommodating mine and my family's uh, uh, food choices, because uh, I have celiac disease and some other autoimmune stuff, and so obviously I can't eat gluten, but I also don't eat dairy, and I uh, don't eat soy. And I uh, was on this cruise, and a uh, couple days on the cruise, everything was great, and then uh, the Tuesday night at dinner, um, ate something I probably shouldn't have. Was, I'm not sure how it happened, but something something made it through and woke up at uh, around midnight with uh, nystagmus. Now, if you don't know what nystagmus is, it's when your eyes jerk like that. I woke up with nystagmus, vertigo, as you would call it, and, uh, you know, couldn't keep my eyes focused on something. Ended up getting really nauseous, you know, vomited my guts out for like four or five hours. And it wasn't seasickness, okay? It was the fact that I got exposed to something to which I have a very big immune sensitivity to. Now, why did I have these kind of vertigo symptoms? Well, it, it scared me, frankly, because when you have one autoimmune disease, for example, I have celiac, right? So in celiac disease, your immune system is targeting your small intestine and trying to kill it. Well, once it's done that, then it can attack anything else it wants to because there's kind of like a taboo that's been broken. Um, normally, you know, you shouldn't attack and kill yourself. Your immune system makes a few antibodies to tissues here and there, but there shouldn't be a lot of antibodies. But when you start attacking a tissue, like in celiac disease, you attack your small intestine, or in rheumatoid arthritis, where you attack your cartilage, or type 1 diabetes, where you attack your pancreas, or you attack insulin, um, or any number of other ones like that, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, where you attack your thyroid, when you have one of those, it's like the floodgates have been opened. The, the, your tolerance for yourself, as they call it, has been broken. So now you can start to attack other tissues and develop other types of symptoms, other types of problems. Well, whenever I got this gluten exposure, keeping in mind I haven't eaten gluten in a very long time, I had a very big immune system reaction to it. And having the vertigo symptoms points to the fact that maybe my cerebellum is involved. I could very well have an attack on my cerebellum. Um, or there's a, another mechanism that might be possible, and I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, I also tested uh, positive for what are called GAD antibodies, uh, GAD-65 antibodies. Now, GAD is a chemical that helps you convert glutamate, which is kind of like an excitatory gas pedal neurotransmitter, into GABA, which is a calming, uh, inhibitory, brake pedal kind of neurotransmitter. Well, if you can't make GAD or something is killing your GAD, then you have a lot of gas pedal and not a lot of brake pedal. So that can show up in people as anxiety. It can show up as blood sugar problems. It can show up as cerebellum problems because the three places where you have the most GAD activity are in your cerebellum, in a place called your basal ganglia in your brain, and in and around your pancreas. So for me, I got these vertigo symptoms, you know, my eyes were going wacky, that's a cerebellar sign. So if you're watching this and you've eaten something and you've got these kind of weird, feel like I'm spinning, uh, and you already know you have an autoimmune condition, then you might have, it might be a signal that your immune system is expanding its attack. Uh, so what do you do about that? Well, you're going to have to find someone that understands this whole thing that we're talking about. And you're, if you're not already gluten-free, you're going to need to go gluten-free and and basically, you need to not try to self-medicate. You need to work with someone who is a good health detective who can work with this and look for what's perpetuating your autoimmune problem, what's triggering it, what are things making it worse. Because there's a bunch of things you have to investigate. I mean, it goes way beyond just getting rid of gluten. I mean, you have to look for things like hidden parasitic infections, viral infections. you got to look at vitamin D deficiencies. you got to look at nitric oxide and glutathione. There's a bunch of stuff. But uh, today, I just wanted to share with you how bad it really, really sucked to have that for about eight hours. I... I sat in the bathroom in the stateroom of the uh, cabin on the on the cruise ship for about six or six eight hours. You know, I was <laughs> propped up against the toilet, you know, with a towel trying to keep my head still. Uh, and it passed, and uh, you know, I was kind of unsteady for a couple of days, and I, I'm back normal because I know what kind of rehab uh, to do on myself and what kind of things to do to to dampen my uh, autoimmune flare up. Uh, but I just want to share that with you because uh, I can really identify with those of you that have had uh, frank vertigo before and are having it. I don't ever want to have it again. So I want to make really, really sure that uh, my food is super clean and is not being contaminated with anything I'm not supposed to be eating.